What's up, everybody? And welcome to Eternally Disappointed. Um, it is Thursday afternoon. Uh, getting ready for divisional round weekend. It's going to be a great weekend of football. We've got a lot of stuff going on. So one of the things that um, has come down the pipe, I think, late last night or early this morning was the Cowboys keeping Mike McCarthy as their head coach. And there's a lot of negative reaction to that. As soon as they lost the playoff game last season, people were calling for this guy's job. As soon as he lost the game on Sunday, or was it, yeah, on Sunday against the Packers, they're calling for his job. Um, especially all the idiot talking heads on the establishment networks. <laughs> the idiot Skip Bayless was calling for Mike McCarthy's job. Stephen A. Smith, some of these other players or former players are calling for his job saying it's unacceptable and this and that. And it kind of made me wonder something. This is the kind of question that will trigger people. And if I was the type of person that gave a fuck, if I triggered people, I wouldn't ask it. But I don't care. I don't care what people think about me. Um, and if you are the type of person that gets triggered, go fuck yourself. My question is this. Mike McCarthy came to the Dallas Cowboys and took over a team that was that had been to the playoffs, I think, four times in the previous nine years. And he's had three straight 12-win seasons. Now, he's got an ultra-talented roster, okay? I think Mike McCarthy is a buffoon. I think Mike McCarthy is a product of good timing. I think Mike McCarthy is only known because he was the head coach for a team Aaron Rodgers was on. And it's like that sometimes because football is such a team game. You could have a player that's not that great, but surround them with talent and they look a lot better than they are. And coaches are no different. If you've got a team that's loaded with talent, it's going to be easier for you to look good or win games especially when two of the teams in your division are laughing stocks. So McCarthy goes there. He's got three straight 12 win seasons and they want to fire the guy. And my question is, if Mike McCarthy was black, would these same people be calling for his job or would they be calling for him to be the highest paid coach in the league? Take Skip Bayless, for example. Now, Skip Bayless is the walking embodiment of everything wrong with this country. Skip Bayless is an idiot. Skip Bayless doesn't know the first thing about sports or athleticism. And for those of you who haven't figured it out, Skip Bayless is gay. Skip Bayless is, is clearly gay. I don't know how people haven't figured this out yet. In one of his books, he said that Troy Aikman was gay. Well, who can pick up on somebody who's pretending to be straight better than another gay man? He's not married. He's never been married. He doesn't have kids. Supposedly, he has a girlfriend named Ernestine that nobody's ever seen or heard of. And he's also got a dog named Hazel. And he loves black men. He surrounds himself with black men. I've never heard him say a negative word about a black person. And it's like that sometimes. Sometimes you just have a, ni a niche or a niche or I forget how you say it. Sometimes you just, that's your thing. He likes black men. And who's the other person he loves the most? Tom Brady, a really good looking guy. What do you know? Skip Bayless once said that Deion Sanders should be getting paid $100 million over the course of three years for the Colorado uh, Buffaloes when, when Deion Sanders won four games this season. Okay? The team was undisciplined. Deion Sanders is not there to be a head coach of a team. He's there to walk his kids into the NFL, which they're going to get drafted way sooner than they should, and then pan out to be nothing. And then people are going to blame the system. So I think if Mike McCarthy was black and he had three straight 12 win seasons for the Cowboys, that you would hear nothing from Stephen A., from Swagoo, from, o from Acho, who I can't stand, but sometimes he makes good points, from Skip, from Michael Irvin. All they would say is that, that this is a black coach that's being underpaid and this and that. But the fact that he's not a black coach means they want him fired immediately. Which makes me think 
that that until Dallas wins a Super Bowl, which I don't think will happen, I think what's going to happen is they're going to win the year after Jerry dies, the same way the Yankees won the year after Steinbrenner died. They're not going to hire a black coach until they win their next Super Bowl because it's so repetitive that this loaded team falters in the playoffs, but they can't call for a black coach's head job. A black head coach's job. They will put paint themselves into a corner. Dallas will never hire a black coach until they win the Super Bowl because they and the league and the establishment and the media know that no matter what, we're going to criticize the shit out of Dallas and call for their coach to be fired. Well, what happens when he's a black coach who you never call to be fired because according to you, these guys are at a disadvantage. They need this. They have the Rooney rule, which if I was an NFL owner, I would never, I would never participate in that. If I'm a coach, I know who I want to be my coach. I don't give a shit. And whatever. So I'm just curious if I'm the only person that has had this thought that if Mike McCarthy was black, not only would they not call for his job, they would just sit there and say that he's completely underpaid and he's the best coach in football because the Cowboys have won 12 games three years in a row in the second weakest division in the league. Hopefully, maybe the third weakest because the AFC South is pretty bad too. So hopefully uh, I get some responses. Good or bad, just don't be a dick. If you want to be a dick, come say it to my face, and we can handle things then. Till then, see you next time.